Hello, and welcome to What's New in Pro Tools 2024.10. I've got a long list of cool features to go through in this video. Every version of Pro Tools now includes Contact Player and some really cool instruments to go along with it. Of course, it's not the entire Contact Library. That's huge, but it's a great start. There's all kinds of different instruments. There's the Pro Tools Factory Essentials, the Contact Factory Selection, etc., to get you going with different drums, keys, basses, all kinds of different sounds. You can never have too many sounds. And where you get this is from within your Avid Link account. You can download this from the Avid website if you log into your Avid account, or you can just log into Avid Link on your Mac or your PC. And Native Instruments, Native Access will be listed as one of the items in your products on your products page in the Avid website or Avid Link. And you can install all of that right from here and you get several activation codes for each of the different components that are included with this. And of course, you can always add more to it. There are many different libraries to add to the contact player, but this is a really cool addition. And again, every Pro Tools system has this. So this is great for collaborations. You can use these sounds, these instruments, and know that another Pro Tools user will have access to these as well. So you can hand the session back and forth easily. Here's another new MIDI instrument feature. It's not new, it's the reintroducing of an old feature, right? So I've got an audio clip on an audio track in Pro Tools. I've trimmed up the top and the tail of it so I've cleaned it up and I can just drag it and drop it right into Structure Plugin is the one I'm using, but this works in other AAX virtual instrument, you know, sample playback plugins, I suppose contact would do this as well. So it's not limited to structure, but I'm using structure for this example. Now I've dragged and dropped it in any processing I've done on this clip gain or clip gain EQ, any of that stuff will be included in the clip that's dragged in. And now I can trigger it from a MIDI keyboard. In this case, I'm using the little software keyboard inside Pro Tools. This isn't a new feature. This was here long this isn't a new feature. This was here long before, but it's been gone for a while. This, 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 this isn't a new feature. This was... Cool. Handy sometimes to add some cool stutter effects and stuff. Again, another partnership with third-party MIDI plugins. Now, this is functionality that was brought in Pro Tools View versions back. I don't know if many people are actually using it or aware of it, but MIDI plugins allow you to do different cool things like arpeggiation and uh, step sequencers, which are two new plugins here. The first one is, I don't even know how you pronounce it, Blease Arpeggiator. And I have a piano plug-in, just the mini grand piano. And as uh, an instrument, I've moved it down to like the third insert on this piano track. And above it, I've inserted a MIDI plug-in. And you can go to the same insert list that you would go to for an audio plug-in and choose MIDI plug-in and Blease Arpeggiator, right? So now I'm just gonna hit one note or a chord. The key to this one is just making cool facial expressions while you're doing this. Yeah, not sure I'm quite up to that yet, but cool plugin. And of course it's got a bunch of presets, which I tend to lean on first. And of course you can go deep into parameters and tweak and create your own presets. Very cool stuff. Blease Arpeggiator for Pro Tools. The other new one added in this version of Pro Tools is called Se Seek One Light. And again, I'm using um, one of the stock virtual plugins, the B3 organ. I've inserted it on the, I'll move it up to the second insert, but I've put the MIDI plugin in the insert right above it, insert number, or insert A, I should say, not number, letter A. And this is a step sequencer for uh, any virtual instruments below this uh, MIDI plugin on that track. So I'm just gonna hit play. I'm not even gonna hit any keys on the keyboard. got a bass line. This is just one of the presets here. And of course it's locked to time. 
Cool stuff. And again, a whole bunch of presets, but you can get in there and create and program your own. These are free with Pro Tools, any uh, current version of Pro Tools. And again, you have to install them separately. So if you go to your Avid Link account or the Avid website and log into your account, you can download and install these. It's really quick and easy to do. This next new addition to Pro Tools 2024.10, I consider one of those hell is frozen over. Steinberg and Avid have partnered to bring a couple of really cool Steinberg products to the Pro Tools ARA functionality. And what that means is these standalone applications are tightly integrated into the Pro Tools timeline. If you're not familiar with either of these two Steinberg products, I decided I'd get it right off of the Avid website here and or the Steinberg website for sure. WaveLab Go is a streamlined version of WaveLab Pro that offers a host of features directly within Pro Tools. Enjoy extensive real-time on-track visualization and analysis tools such as spectrogram, rainbow display, global loudness analysis, and loudness curve. And I'm just sc scratching the surface here. Please go to the Steinberg website. Now, Wave WaveLab Go is a scaled-down version of Wave WaveLab Pro. This WaveLab Go is free with every Pro Tools system now. And of course, you can upgrade to WaveLab Pro through Steinberg, and I encourage you to do that. Steinberg Spectral Layers Go here on the Avid website, or please go to steinberg.net to check out more on this. Spectral Layers Go allows you to visualize audio in a flexible, hyper-detailed spectrogram and explore the concept of layer-based editing. And it also allows you to extract extract vocal tracks from the music and it does an impressively good job. I've played with this some um, and uh, it's actually very cool. Another new feature in 2024-10 for Atmos. If you haven't dabbled in Dolby Atmos mixing, um, I strongly suggest that you try it. It's very cool and um, fun. It's a whole new twist, right? So it's all built into Pro Tools now. It's included in every Pro Tools Studio or Pro Tools Ultimate versions of Pro Tools. So I've created this session in, in an Atmos format and I'm gonna go to the window menu and go to the Dolby Atmos renderer. I've set up my system to have a 7.1.4 speaker system and that's what you're seeing over here. The cool new features added in this version of Pro Tools allow me to solo or mute uh, these speakers individually, right? So if I wanted to solo just the left channel, I can do that from here. Kind of nice to be able to do that. Or if I hold the control key on a Mac and I mute them, I can mute the three fronts or the two sides or the rears or the sides and the rears. Maybe I want to mute the fronts and the rears, but not the sides. Or maybe I want to mute all of the ceilings. If I hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a Windows machine, I can mute or unmute or solo or unsolo the ceiling speakers as a group or all of the, you know, the the ear level speakers, the LCRs, the sides and the surrounds, I can do that. So this is kind of a cool uh, ability, help, helping you isolate things when you're doing a mix and see what's, uh, what's going where. And while we're in this Dolby Atmos renderer window, another new feature here is the trim and down mix window is now a floating window. Previously, it was tied to this renderer window so you can close it, have it open still, and adjust and see your re-render configurations or your down mixes. We've reached section seven of the What's New document. This is miscellaneous features and improvements and a handful of cool stuff here. So I'm gonna rattle through these. Some of these I think you'll appreciate. The first one is detachable clip list. That's the clip list on the far right side of the Pro Tools edit window. If you hit this little double box here, you can float the clip list. You can put it on another screen. You can put it on the left side, wherever you want to. Playlist solo button improvements. Okay, so I've got an audio track here and it's got know, about four playlists. Let's go to the playlist view. And each one of these playlists is a different guitar part. And I wanna be able to audition those different parts against the drum beat. The drum beat's up here, I'm gonna play that. 
previous versions of Pro Tools had a solo button here on each playlist, and now it's been changed to audition button. The functionality is pretty much the same, but maybe it will help uh, clarify, you know, the difference between solo on the top track. So if I hit solo on the top track, I'm getting guitar only, which is fine, but I want to hear the guitar against the drums, and then I want to try the second playlist guitar part and the third playlist guitar part against drums. So I'm going to audition those by just clicking on the audition button as I go. All right, so here it is. And there's a shortcut to do that. It's uh, Shift S. So if I start playback, take the selection down to the second playlist, and I hit Shift S. Now I'm auditioning the second playlist. I'm still hearing drums. And then I'll take that selection down to the third playlist, hit Shift S. Okay, fades allowed in clip groups. Okay, so here's an example where I've got a drum clip that I sliced and diced. I used a function called separate at transient, separate clip at transients. And you can see that there's an edit at every transient. And if I really zoom in, there's crossfades, fade-ins and crossfades. Now in the past, if I had a clip like this that was edited and crossfaded and then grouped like I have it here, I couldn't really do much with it in elastic audio. And by that, I mean change the tempo. So I'm playing back at 120 beats per minute right now. And in the past, if I wanted to change that, elastic audio is enabled on this track. So if I want to take this down to 110, for example, it would throw a dialogue saying it couldn't uh, use elastic audio on grouped clips that contain fades. That's been taken care of. So now you can change the tempo as you choose. Let's go down 96. What the heck? Okay, marker improvements. All right, so a lot's been done with markers in the last couple of versions of Pro Tools. In this version, a couple of small things that are quite helpful, right? So I've got three different markers here. I can now right click on them, I can edit that marker which brings up my edit memory location window on my other screen, sorry. Or I can right click on it and change the color. I wanna go to green right there, or I wanna change this one. And you might have color coding for uh, different sections. Maybe verses are green and uh, choruses are yellow and solos are purple, whatever. However you want to color code your stuff, you can easily change the color of markers like that. Of course, I can delete them. Uh, I can do that quite easily. Another cool thing is, is you have the different of uh, the, the lines for each of the different markers. Sometimes that's handy, but it's also nice to get rid of them if you want. So there's now a shortcut, Control, Option, Command, R on a Mac or a, on a PC. It's probably, I'll look it up, but I can toggle those marker lines on and off and they're a little bit hard to see. Let me get rid of the grid lines. There we go. How about that? So now I can toggle the marker lines on and off. Color coding improvements in the edit and mix window. Color menus in IO menus. So I'm gonna flip over to the mix window and I've got outputs and inputs set here. Let me just go to a different input. I can now right click and choose a color for inputs. And um, this is really handy um, for routing, submixing to to color code outputs, right? So I can do this on inputs, outputs, and I believe sends as well. Let's try that. So I'm gonna assign a bus here. And yes, I'm gonna assign all my headphone mixes to be, I don't know, green, like that. So uh, not only can you rename sends and buses and outputs and inputs, but you can color code them as well. All of that color coding of inputs, outputs, and sends has, has been there for a minute in Pro Tools. The new part is that you can see these colors in your I.O menus. So you can easily group outputs based on, I don't know, whatever you want. Uh, this applies to outputs, buses. So maybe you've color coded uh, effects ends, reverbs and delays one color or um, headphone mixes another color or however you want to 
you know, coordinate your sessions, you can see those color coding in the menu list. So it makes it a little bit easier to identify outputs that you're looking for. All right, searchable outputs in the bounce mix window. Here's my bounce window. So if I wanna do a bounce, an additional bounce, I can go here and I can search for bus three and four. Let's go three. So there's bus three. I just typed in three and it brought up all of the outputs with uh, the contain three. So it allows me to quickly search and find the outputs that I might want to assign in a bounce mix. Last but not least, I'm gonna bring this one up because there's a lot of info here. This is regarding Pro Tools alternate keyboard shortcuts. So now in Pro Tools, of course, few versions back, the ability to edit and modify and create your own shortcuts was added to Pro Tools. But now you have uh, presets for different keyboard shortcuts based on these different applications, Adobe Audition, DaVinci Resolve, FL Studio, Live, Logic Pro, Media Composer, all these different things. So you can recall these keyboard shortcut presets if you're familiar with the layout of those shortcuts. You're coming from a different app into Pro Tools. So that's kind of interesting and cool. So there we wrap up the Pro Tools 2024.10 What's New Doc. Hope you enjoy these new features and uh, see you soon.